The Kraft Food Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Tonight, Kraft has sensational news for all of you about parquet margarine. There's a delicious new parquet, and it spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Think of that. The minute you take Kraft's new parquet ice cold from your refrigerator, it's ready to cut into neat pats, ready to spread smoothly on the freshest slice of bread. Kraft's new parquet margarine comes in a new ice blue package. You'll love the way it tastes. You'll love the way it spreads. Well, it's no secret that the great Gildersleeve considers himself Summerfield's most eligible bachelor. Perhaps his best proof of this is the fact that at present he has two girlfriends. Naturally, this is somewhat flattering to the water commissioner's ego. I'm glad to see the weekend rolling around. Let's see now. Who will I take out tomorrow night? Paula or Gloria? Well, depends on where I want to go. Nice to be able to pick your girl the way you select the suit of clothes for the evening. Gildersleeve, you're really living Hello, Bertie. Evening, Miss Gildersleeve. Ironing, Bertie? Yes, we're just pressing up your suit. Which one are you going to want next? Uh, tomorrow night, I think I'll wear the brunette. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the dark blue. <laughs> yes, sir. Is Leroy home yet? Oh, yes, sir. He's in there on the phone talking to a little girl. That wife's been hot for the last hour. Mm, that boy, always talking on the phone. Oh, he's not talking much. He's just listening. Oh? <laughs> She's laying him out. What's his problem now, Bertie? Well, the way I did it, he invited a little girl down the street to go to the movies and then forgot about it and invited another girl. Now the girl he invited and forgot about won't let him forget it. <laughs> you know, I'll have to have a talk with Leroy. He's about as well organized as an octopus. Yeah, I know, but listen, Susan. Mm, look at that position he slid into. One leg draped over the sofa, the other wound around the coffee table. He even looks like an octopus. Yeah, but Susan, listen. Okay, I'll listen. <laughs> Poor kid. I know, Susan. I'm sorry. Yeah, but... Yeah, but... Yeah, but... <laughs> Maybe I should cut the wire and get him out of this. <laughs> okay, okay. I said I was sorry. Okay, I'll drop dead. <laughs> now will you go to the movie with me? What a way to get her to go to the movies with him. Leroy. Oh, hi, Uncle. Excuse me, Susan. My uncle's home. See you around. Phew. Oh, brother. My boy, if you get your wires crossed like this, you'll never be able to get along with a girl. I don't want to get along with girls. Never again. I don't want to have anything to do with them. Yeah, well, chances are that's a temporary attitude. <laughs> Why do they have to be so touchy? I even tried to make a deal with them. I offered to take them both at once. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, girls don't like to be taken both at once. They don't like to think they have rivals. Yeah? They know they have them, but they don't like to think about it. I guess I just don't understand women. Well, my boy, it takes years of experience and know-how. Take your old uncle. I can handle him like a juggler handles Indian clubs. I go with two different girls myself. I never let the one on my right know who I'm juggling in my left. You mean Mrs. Winthrop doesn't know you go out with Miss McKinley? No. Well, I have the poor girls all upset and worried. I'm going to phone Paula Winthrop right now and make a date for tomorrow night. And then I'll phone Miss McKinley and take her out Saturday night. But what if they get wise to you? Leroy, they don't get wise to an old smoothie like me. Now, if you'll just observe the way I operate, you'll learn a few things. Yeah, I bet I will. Hello? Paula, this is Throckmorton. Oh, yes, Throckmorton. Guess who I've been thinking about all day. Well, of course, you'll have to say me. Yep, you. When I came in the house tonight, I said to myself, I'll phone Paula and ask her for a date tomorrow night. Hmm. Well, that was a nice thought. Yeah. You have a date. 
Tomorrow night it is. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it, too. Great. I have to eat now. Ta-ta. Bye. He wasn't busy, huh? Leroy, when I call him, they're never busy. Get him. I thought you were going to eat. Well, I have to call Miss McKinley. Hello? Gloria, this is Throckmorton. I know that big, booming voice anywhere. <laughs> Gloria, guess who I've been thinking about all day? You. Oh, brother. <laughs> I'll bet you say that to all the girls. What girls? Oh, Throckmorton. When I came in the house tonight, I said to myself, I'll phone Gloria and ask her for a date Saturday night. Saturday night? Well, I don't know why not. Saturday night it is. I can't wait. Do you want to make it tomorrow night? No, no. Yeah, I mean, uh, Saturday night is fine. <laughs> fine and dandy. See you then. Goodbye. Ta-ta. <laughs> what a character. Well, Leroy, what do you think of that? I think your technique could be improved. Oh, could it? Yeah, you ought to have another phone put in so you can talk to both girls at once. Oh? You use the same line anyway. <laughs> These mornings are getting a little nippy. Before long, I'll have to start wearing my overcoat to work. See, there's the judge walking to his office. He's a spry old duffer. Well, the old goat should be. He lives on roots and herbs. <laughs> hey, judge. Good morning, Gelda. How about a lift to town? Thank you, Gelda, but I'm taking my morning constitutional. Oh, hop in, Horace. Gelda, I need my morning exercise. But I want to talk to you. If you want to talk to me, I'll travel along beside the car. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Judge, you'd never keep up. Perhaps I shouldn't race you on foot. I might get excited and run through a stoplight. <laughs> get in, Judge. I don't know where you get all your pep. Well, for one thing, I keep regular hours. I don't go gallivanting around town every night the way you do. Can I help it if I'm popular? Oh, I can't stand it. I think I'll get out and walk. <laughs> No, Judge. Uh-oh. Here's a pair of ladies' gloves on the floor of the car. Ladies' gloves? Do they belong to one of your friends? Say, they're glorious. Miss McKinley's, huh? Yes. Thanks for finding them, Judge. I think I'll park here at Hogan Brothers and return them. You're going to disturb her during business hours? Why don't you wait until you see her tonight? I'm not going to see her tonight. This is Paula's night. Gloria's night is tomorrow night. I don't see how you keep your engagement straight. Yeah, like I was telling Leroy, you never get mixed up if you're clever. See you later, Judge. No, no, I'm going in with you. Judge. I want to watch a clever fellow work. Yes, yes. Now stand back, Judge. Good morning, Gloria. Why, Throckmorton. Hello there. Good morning, Miss McKinley. What's that? Oh, Judge Hooker. Yeah, the judge tagged along. Uh... Gloria, you were a little careless when I drove you home the other night. I was? What'd I do? You left your gloves in my car. My gloves? So I thought I'd return them this morning. Any excuse to see you? <laughs> Throckmorton, those are not my gloves. You said you're not? <laughs> <laughs> Come along, Judge. But Gildy... If they aren't Miss McKinley's, they must be Miss... Come along, Judge. They must be Miss who? Uh, judge means they must be Miss Singh uh, from somewhere else. Uh, who knows? Maybe I got in the wrong car this morning. Oh, I get it. Miss McKinley doesn't know about Come Miss... along, you old goat. <laughs> Right, 
George, I don't know how I made that mistake about the gloves this morning. He didn't like me to make mistakes. Oh, well. Gloria will get over it. Hello, Miss Jeff, please. Hello, Bertie. You don't mind if dinner's a little late, do you? No, oh, not at all. Miss Marjorie's out in the kitchen and we've been talking. Fine, I'll drift out later and see her. Yes, sir. I guess I'll take off my coat and relax. I... I say, I didn't realize these gloves were sticking out of my pocket. Better stuff them inside. Leroy sees them, he'll start asking questions. After all my big talk last night about how to handle women, I'd hate for him to know what happened this morning. Hi, Elk. Oop. Hello, Leroy. I've been waiting for you to come home. You have? I took a telephone call for you this afternoon. You did? Yeah. One of your girls. Who? Bet you can't guess which one. Well, either girl is likely to call me at any time. Tell me what you want, and I'll call her back. It was Miss McKinley at Hogan Brothers. Well, I'll call her later. Well, she doesn't want to talk to you. She doesn't? No, she said just to give you the message. Oh. But I can't believe the message. This is fantastic. Leroy, what is the message? She doesn't want to go out with you tomorrow night. <laughs> she called off our date? Yep. You're through. <laughs> oh, my... Unc, after all you told me last night, this is very confusing to a young man. All right, Leroy. So Miss McKinley got upset because I thought Paula's gloves belonged to her. Unc, far be it for me to try to give you advice, but why didn't you play it cagey? What do you mean, cagey? Why didn't you keep quiet? A girl who lost the gloves would ask about them sooner or later. Leroy, I had every reason to believe they were glorious. I'm just glad I didn't make the mistake with Paula. Yeah, I better phone her now and let her know I have her gloves. Yeah? Hello? Hello, Paula. Throckmorton. Oh, it's you, Throckmorton. Yeah, me. I could have waited until tonight, but I wanted to hear your voice anyway. Oh? I found your gloves in my car, just in case you're wondering what happened to them. Well, Throckmorton, I haven't lost any gloves. They were on... You haven't lost any gloves? <laughs> Young man. But, Paula, they must be yours. Well, perhaps they belong to some other girl. Oh, you know, no, they don't belong to Miss... I mean... Well, anyway, I'll see you tonight. Oh, uh, Ross Morton. Yeah? About tonight. I think I'd best stay home. But, Paula... I just remembered I have to finish reading a library book tonight. Library book? Well, if you must... Why? Lost both of them, huh? <laughs> Just because I tried to be nice and return a pair of ladies' gloves. Now, whose gloves Excuse could they... Excuse me, Auntie. Yes, Marjorie. When I drove Bertie to the grocery yesterday, did I leave my gloves in your car? Oh! Gildersleeve will be right back. Only once in a blue moon can there be news like this. It's about Kraft's new parquet margarine that comes to you in a new ice blue package. Kraft has just perfected a new way to make margarine. And new parquet has the texture you've always wanted in a table spread. It does away with the warm-up that any ordinary table spread needs when taken from the refrigerator. Even when ice cold... New parquet spreads smoothly. It won't tear holes in the freshest slice of bread. Even when ice cold, new parquet creams fast and easy when you use it as a flavor shortening in your baking. And yet parquet won't run all over the plate when you leave it standing out in a warm kitchen. It holds its shape, won't separate. And parquet tastes even better than ever before. Don't you agree this is the most exciting news you've ever heard about a table spread? you'll recognize Kraft's new parquet margarine because it comes in a new ice blue package. There's a picture of a cake of ice in the corner to remind you that it spreads smoothly even when ice cold. If your grocer doesn't already have his stock of new parquet now, he will in just a few days. Look for new parquet tomorrow. <laughs> The 
Ray Gildersleeve was doing very well, showing Leroy how to be popular with two girls at the same time until he found a pair of ladies' gloves in his car. He tried to return them to Gloria, and he tried to return them to Paula, but they didn't belong to either one. How do I get into these things? Anki, I'll be glad to go across the street and explain to Paula that they're my gloves. Well, Marjorie... I won't do any good. Uncle already let it slip that he has another girl. Has another girl. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, Leroy, don't poke fun at Anki. Oh, no, I wouldn't do that. I'm on good terms with Babs and Susan again just from watching us operate. <laughs> Great. That way I don't make the same mistake. <laughs> Please. What is it, Bertie? I don't suppose you're in a hurry for dinner since you ain't dating tonight. No hurry. I'm staying home, Bertie. Yes, sir. Don't sound so sad, Unc. There's lots of things you can do. Sit by the fireside, listen to the radio, work a crossword puzzle, wait up for me to come home for my day. Isn't Leroy awful? Well, I've got it coming, Marjorie. I shouldn't have set myself up as a Don Juan. Big, fat me. Oh, poor Anki. Mr. Gilsey, there's ways for you to get out of this. Yeah, I don't know, Bertie. There's ways for you to get your girl back. Which one? There's ways for him to get both girls back. All he's got to do is to write to Mary Jane Trueheart. Why write to another woman? He's in the doghouse with two of them now. <laughs> Leroy, Mary Jane Trueheart has the Love Lorn column in the paper. Yeah? Oh, my goodness. Here's the paper. Let's just see who she helped out today. Bertie, please. Read it, Bertie. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, here's her column, and here's a picture, and here's the letter some love Lorna wrote. Let's see. Dear Mary Jane Trueheart, I'm a 31-year-old youth. Youth? I am... I am considered handsome, attractive, and a big spender, but the girls shun me. What should I do? Silly stuff. What did she tell him, Bertie? She says, dear discourage. Oh, for... These days, no handsome, attractive man need long remain without feminine companionship. Well. <laughs> Fortunately for you men, there's a shortage of eligible bachelors, and don't think the girls aren't aware of it. You say she's right about that. You see, Miss Gilfrey, you feel better already. Why don't you write her, Unc? I am a handsome, attractive, middle-aged youth who... Young man. <laughs> what? My George, I don't like the family's attitude about this thing. I'm the breadwinner around the house, not the laughing stock. There must be some way to save face. I think I'll stop in and talk this thing over with Petey. Of course, he doesn't have to know I'm the guy in trouble. Hello, Petey. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Petey, I'm trying to help a friend. You don't say. I thought I'd come to you for some advice. You have a head on your shoulders. Well, I have to have some place to put my hat. <laughs> Peavy, this friend of mine is in a little difficulty with his girlfriend. You mean he has more than one? He has two. He is in trouble. Well, not because he has two girls, Peavy. He really doesn't have any. How's that? That is, right now he doesn't have any. Well, then what's his trouble? Peavy, he wants his two girls back. Mr. Gildersleeve, I hesitate to say this about your friend, but isn't he a little greedy? <laughs> No, I'm not. <laughs> All right, Peavy. I'll admit I'm the guy. I found a pair of ladies' gloves in my car, and I made the mistake of trying to return them to both Paula and Miss McKinley. And they didn't belong to either one. My, my. Now they're both mad at me. What do you think I should do, Peavy? Get out of town. <laughs> Be serious, Peavy. Why should girls get all upset just because of a pair of little gloves? Well, it's... Might be because... Oh, no, that that couldn't be. What couldn't be, Petey? Well, I was about to suggest that they might be jealous of you, but that couldn't be. <laughs> Wait a minute, Petey. You may have stumbled onto something there. Why else would they break their dates with me? Because they're jealous. That's the answer. It's one answer. 
<laughs> it's the only answer. The green-eyed monster has clouded their judgment. That's why they've thrown me over. That's possible, isn't it, Pete? Yeah, anything's possible. <laughs> sure. And if they get jealous over a pair of gloves, think how I could worry them if I really put my mind to it. Mr. Gildersleeve, I wouldn't push my luck too far. P.V., I know what I'm doing. I'll make them think I'm so popular they'll be scrambling to get dates with me. They'll consider me the catch of Summerfield. Well, there's not a bigger fish in town. <laughs> no, sir. P.V., my only problem is that I've been underestimating myself. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> a little drawn and haggard. Poor girl. She's probably been losing sleep over me. Mr. Bentley, hi. Well, I'll toy with her for a while. I had the advantage all the time and didn't know it. Why not use it? Good morning, Gloria. Oh, it's you. Yep, me. <laughs> you here on business, Mr. Gildersleeve? Mr. Gildersleeve? Say, she's jealous all right. If not, I know you'll excuse me while I go about mine. Now, Gloria, how about a little smile? Throckmorton, why are you here? Why? Well, if you must know, I finally found the girl the gloves belong to. So I thought I'd take her a bottle of perfume and make amends for keeping them so long. The man has to be tactful, you know. This is not the perfume counter. Oh, I know. But I thought you might recommend something that would make a big impression on Jane. Or was it Mabel? I wouldn't know. Oh, well, I'll get both of them something. Any suggestions? Yes. Are you sure you want to hear them? <laughs> no, Gloria. I know you don't like the idea. But you just have to face it. I have other girlfriends. Many of them. In fact, next week I'm booked solid. But I want to be big about this. How about a date a week from Saturday night? I happen to be busy that night. Well, how about Sunday night? Busy. Monday night? Busier. Well, Tuesday? Wednesday? Thursday? For your information, I'm dating nobody but the assistant manager. Hmm. I didn't think I'd make her that jealous. So you're crossing Miss McKinley off your list, huh, Unc? You bet. While we're on the subject, Leroy, I'd like to give you a little advice about girls. Some more? Pick out one nice girl and stick to her, like I'm doing. What do you mean, like I'm doing? You haven't even got a girl. Well, I'm going across the street to get one back right now. Mrs. Winthrop? Sure. When I phoned and said I wanted to come over, she was very nice. The other day, I just temporarily upset her, that's all. She's not a butterfly flitting from flower to flower like Miss McKinley. Miss McKinley flitted back to the assistant manager, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Leroy. Everything's working out to the best. Paula's the girl for me. She's lived across the street for over a year now, and she never dates with anybody else. We've been going steady without me realizing it. Well, good luck, steady. <laughs> <laughs> you run back in the house. I'll see you later. Okay. Well, this is your test, Gildersleeve. Leroy, the little family, will be waiting to know how I come out. If I don't swing it, I'll never hear the last of it. I'll have to handle this differently. No bragging. I'll be humble. My old, sincere self. Oh, hello, Throckmorton. Hello, Paula. Come in. Thank you. I appreciate your seeing me. Permitting me to come over. Oh, relax, Throckmorton. You're acting like a little boy who's misbehaved. Well, I have. I've been a heel. I should have told you long ago that I have other dates occasionally. Oh, you're under no obligation to do that. Sit down. Well, on the edge of the chair. <laughs> Thank you. You shouldn't tell me anything you don't want to. Oh, I want to tell you about it. After all, we're going steady. We are? Well, practically. I haven't been going out lately, and you never go out. You're the stay-at-home, book-reading type. Oh, well, I don't sound very interesting, do I? 
Well, not to a lot of people, maybe, but to me you are. You're solid, Paula. Well. You're true blue, the salt of the earth, a real wholesome, old-fashioned girl. Well, Throckmorton, you say such flattering things. Well, I mean them. You make a little stay-at-home, book-reading, old-fashioned girl feel so good. Uh, then I'm forgiven. Well, there's nothing to forgive, really. Great. Then how about me coming back a little later? How about a date tonight? Oh, if you like. Yippee! <laughs> yeah, I knew I could count on you, Paula. There's no use in both of us sitting at home twiddling our thumbs any longer. <laughs> Would you like to come over about eight? Love it. Until tonight, then, Paula. Paula? Now, Throckmorton. But, Paula, we're making up. Run along, you impetuous boy. <laughs> she tweaked my cheek. Here's your hat. I'll see you tonight. Tonight. Can't wait. Bye. Bye, George. I do feel like a boy. She tweaked my cheek. Wait until I tell Leroy. Leroy! Oh, Leroy! Yeah? Hey, what's happened to you? What's happened? Well, things happened just as I said they would. She's been lonesome. Sitting over there waiting for me to ask her for a date. Just pining away. Yeah? Hey, where'd you get the hat? What hat? That hat you're wearing. It's three sizes too big for you. <laughs> That's some other guy's hat. Who left his hat over there? <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just 30 seconds. The newest discovery in a table spread now comes in an ice blue package. It's Kraft's new parquet, the margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Compare new parquet with any other table spread, and you'll agree it spreads better, far better. New parquet is good eating, too, with a delightful flavor that sings of freshness. Tomorrow, look for Kraft's new parquet in the blue package. It looks wonderful, it tastes wonderful, and it spreads smoothly even when ice cold. I never dreamed Paula would be seeing another man with me right across the street. You know, all the time I thought she was reading a book. Well, I'm glad I didn't keep my date with her last night. I'm glad I had Leroy return that hat. I never want to see Paula again. I'll show her. Yeah, there's Gloria at the complaint desk. I know she prefers me to that assistant manager. Yeah, I'd like to get a date with her and drive right past Paula's house. Might even get a look at the guy who owns the hat. Yeah, I'll be charming, Gillespie. Good morning, Gloria. Oh, Throckmorton, I I'm very busy this morning. Yeah, so I see. Somebody return a purchase? Some woman returned a hat. I asked her what was wrong with it, and she said, not a thing. It served its purpose. Say, that's a man's hat. Looks like the one I wore home last night. I mean, Gloria, who had this hat sent out? Uh, a woman who lives on your street. Do you know a Mrs. Paula Winthrop? <laughs> Not as well as she knows me. <laughs> a man should never try to outsmart a woman. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Jean Bates, Viola Vaughn, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Done up just right, a delicious hamburger can be truly a gourmet's delight, a big deal in eating pleasure. 
Of course, just about every good cook knows that a dash of craft prepared mustard really makes a hamburger. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Craft mustard, naturally. There are two kinds of craft prepared mustard. Mild craft mustard, if you like it smooth and delicately spiced. Snappy craft mustard with horseradish added, if you like it nippy. Get both kinds of craft prepared mustard at your food store. <laughs> Tonight, play You Bet Your Life on NBC. 